Greetings and welcome to the Progressive Church of God in Christ, where the pastor is Dr. B.L. Tolliver. I am excited to welcome you to our annual Women's Department Conference. Our president is missionary Kendra McKnight, a faithful woman of the Lord. This year, our theme is I shall live and declare. What are we declaring? The blessings of the Lord. Together, you and I as sisters, we are going to share living beyond the loss, how to live in expectation. Sisters and sisters learning to live together naturally and spiritually. This is a time where women are going to come and they're going to give you their declaration of living because God said that we can live. So I want you to join me in welcoming our president, missionary Kendra McKnight. God bless you. And at this time, let's give her a good God bless you. Thank you, Dr. James. I would personally like to welcome each of you to our 2022 Women's Conference. It's a new year and an exciting time for the Progressive Women's Department. It's time for us to continue to grow spiritually, mentally, physically, and emotionally. We are embracing all of the changes that have been presented us to us throughout this past year. I would first like to thank my husband for his love and support of my ministry. And we honor our great leader, Pastor B.L. Tolliver, for always encouraging and supporting the women's department. To our incredible First Lady Mother Tolliver, we love you so much and appreciate you. We continue to build upon your legacy. Thanks to our special guest, Pastor Latanya Blake Allen, and our psalmist, Evangelist Sherelle Murray. Our theme for 2022 is I Shall Live and Declare, found in Psalms 118 and 17, and living the life that God has called us to live and declaring the good works every step of the way is what we will do this year. We will be intentional about our relationship with Jesus this year, and I declare that we will walk in total obedience. We are thankful to the Lord for allowing us to see another women's conference. During this conference, you are going to be challenged. Our speakers are going to challenge how you live your lives each day, your friendships, your sisterhood, how you steward your finances, and so much more. Our guest psalmist is going to usher us into the very presence of God. So if you feel isolated or perhaps feeling distance from God right now, in that case, the conference is going to change your life by moving you closer to God. My prayer this weekend is that you would reconnect to Jesus. I mean, really reconnect with him. And the only way you can reconnect is to stay focused and open your heart to him. I know that Jesus is going to minister to you and change your life. I know this is because I prayed and asked him to do just that. Hopefully, you have all of your conference materials, your snacks, of course, and most of all, your heart position to receive from Jesus. Again, thank you for attending, and let's get ready to live and declare. Now let's hear a word from our pastor and first lady. Along with the pastor, I'm thrilled to encourage you to support the Women's Department Annual Women Conference under the leadership of missionary Kendra McKnight. The theme encourages us to live a de and declare I know you will be blessed by God through uh, the speakers and events. And we look forward to seeing you there. God bless. Greetings. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am excited about our upcoming Winman's Conference. It is with a sense of joy and expectation that we wait for the manifestation of God's glory among us. As we prepare ourselves to declare all that he was, all that he is, and all that he will be to us, we thank God for Missionary Kendra McKnight, the president of our women's department, and the tremendous job she's doing here at the Progressive Church Pray God's blessings on the conference. Thank God for your participation.
Hallelujah. We came to lift up God on today. Just want to praise forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me. Blessings. I live and declare that every area of my life will see increase and in elevation from entering my career to my mental health and my physical health. God will get the glory out of everything.
Hello and welcome to Progressive Church of God in Christ, Women's Department 2022 Annual Conference. This year's theme is I Shall Live and Declare. There are so many things that we need to be declaring in our life, and this is the year that we are going to do that. And because of that, we shall live. I am your host for today, and I'm going to be teaching a class on living in expectation. Coach Kimmy James, I'd like to welcome you to this session. In today's class, we have a few objectives that I want to teach you about. We're going to be learning how to create a list of three word prayers that you can declare. So our class expectations are this, why we pray, how we pray, and what we pray. You're going to find a list of three words declaration prayers that you are going to be able to declare over your life. The prayers are a set value that you cherish because they are who you are and they are who God is in your life. There are desirable prayers that are meaningful and have a relevant interest and expectation for your life. You don't have to invent them because they're already what's inside of you. Your job is just to uncover them in today's class. So you're gonna find these expectations and you're gonna learn and understand these three word prayers of declaration in your life. So first, let's look at why we pray. In Luke 11, one through four, it reads this. One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught the disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive our sins, for we also forgive every forgive our sins, also forgive everyone who sins against us, and lead us not into temptation. When Jesus' disciples showed him, showed them how to pray, Jesus first told them what they should pray for. In the Lord's Prayer, also known as the Disciples' Prayer, he gave them and us a line-by-line -line recipe for how to come up with mountain-moving, powerful prayers. The disciples concluded that Jesus's, the source of Jesus' power over sin, death, and the devil rested in prayer. We pray for power, anointing, and restoration. Let's talk about next how we pray. How we pray Let's look at Luke 11, 11 through 13. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will you give him a snake instead? Or if you ask him for an egg, will you give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, you know to give good gifts to your children, how much more would your father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Earthly fathers who are filled with selfishness and pride inside of them desire to give only good gifts to their children. Even the worst mafia boss will shower their children with good gifts, even in their sinful nature and in their earthly self. So if even mafia bosses will give their children good gifts, then how much more does a good loving God have to give to his children. The Father longs to bless you with your deepest desires of your soul. That's who he is. And knowing who he is feels how we pray. We make sure that we pray with passion, crying out to him persistently, expectantly, and gratefully, knowing that he is going to answer our prayers. Next, let's look at what we pray. Esther 4 and 16 says this, Go gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days or night. And, and I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Queen Esther prayed 
two three-word prayers. If I perish, then I perish. What she's saying is, if I perish, it reveals that she knew she might die if she dared to go before the king unannounced. It was a risk, but one she needed to take. She then counted the cost of faithfulness. Her decision to try to save her people had been made. Then her saying, then I perish, was not part of a quiet resignation in her soul. Rather, it was a faith declaration of what she needed to pray. If she died, she died. There was no turning back when she declared, if I perish, then I perish. Those were her two word prayers. So let's get into what it's going to look like to help you to find your three word prayers. I'd like for you to grab a piece of paper. Also provided in your packet is the slide that's going to give you a step-by-step -step model on how to find your three word declarations. But what we're going to do first is find your qualities of expectation in your life. On the first slide and on your piece of paper, on the left hand side, column A, you're going to list people I admire. I'd like for you to find about four or five people that are influential and that you admire in your life. This can be anyone like a mother or a father. It can be a local person in your church. It could be a community activist. It can be a celebrity, someone that you admire. Go ahead and write those names down on the left side of your paper. I'll wait for you. So you're going to make sure that you leave a little bit of space because I want you to list about three to five qualities of that individual that you admire. So for example, you might see, hmm, my mom, I admire that she's strong, faithful, persistent, and continue to list the qualities that really stick out to you. I would like for you to make sure that you use adjectives. This helps later when we are determining your three word prayers of declaration. So instead of saying courage, this person can be courageous. Go ahead and continue to list out your qualities that you admire. I'll give you just a few more moments. What really sticks out to you about this person? What really um, brings out the best in them that you really see? These are the qualities that we want to identify. Okay, I think we're ready. You can always add more qualities to your list as we go on in the examples. So let's look at the next part of the assignment. What you want to do is from your list, you want to refine these qualities because at this point you maybe have about 20 or 25 qualities and that's great, but it is too many. 
So we want to refine your list down to about seven to 10 qualities. So I want you to look at your list. I want you to look at those qualities from those individuals. Take your pencil, take a check mark for each one of them that really sets and resonates with you. This is a quality that I really like. This is a quality that stands out the most to me. Does reading this word warm my heart at this moment? Do I love being around people who demonstrate this quality in my life or in their life? If there are some other qualities or traits that you didn't get to see on your first list, but now you feel like an urge to add them, that's fine. Add them to your list and add a check mark. But remember, you only have seven to 10 check marks to be able to add. I'll give you a couple of moments to check off your qualities that are most intriguing to you. Okay, great. So now you have this list of qualities and you have a check mark. All right, you're gonna grab a new piece of paper. On a fresh piece of paper, you are now going to write your qualities of expectation. This can be your list of seven to 10, even maybe a little bit more qualities that you admire about these people. Take some time to write down individually each one of those. So on the screen, you'll see strong, faithful, fearless, strategic, loving mother, focused, wise. Go ahead and rewrite your qualities on your new piece of paper. Okay, you should have your seven to 10 qualities listed. Look at this list, soak it in. What I love about this list is that when you look at it, your heart should feel good. These are your declarations. This is who you are. No one had to tell you that this is who you are. And do you know why this is you? It's because it's qualities that you see in others. We typically are a reflection of those things that we see and that we would like to be. I am a strong mother. I am faithful. I am fearless, strategic, focused, and wise. What are your qualities of expectation? They are who you are. It's your innate nature. It's what you were gifted and born and what we are going to declare in your life. One thing to note about the list, whatever qualities that you listed, 110%, they will be the qualities of God. They are expectations of how God is going to show up in your life. These are your declarations of three word prayers. This is what your three word prayers will look like. You will only have three words to put together for your expectations to declare. So let's put them together. This one will say, I am strong, faithful is God. Father, you're fearless. I am strategic. I'm a loving mother. Keep me focused. Lord, my helper. Lord, my communicator. Whatever it is that was on your list, these are going to be your prayers that you are going to learn and recite and they're easy to learn because they are who you are and they are who God is showing up in your life to be. God is a redeemer. God, my helper, Lord, my provider. Whatever those things are that were on your expectations, they are your three words of declaration. So next, let's talk about real quickly teaching your children three word prayers because they're not just for us to know three word prayers of declaration. I have a little six year old and he is just so stinking cute. My heart and joy. 
Love them to death. One thing about three word prayers is that children can learn them very easily. When he goes to school every day, um, we recite these words of affirmation, no different than three word prayers. So one day I was watching a video and I saw this little girl inside of the video and she was standing on her kitchen countertop or even probably on her bathroom countertop. And she stands in the mirror every day and she gives these declarations of how she wants to show up in life in her three words. And ever since Romello was a little baby, I've always said to him words like, I am powerful, I'm declaring over his life, I am strong, I am healthy, I am confident. I am loved. And what's so important about that is that now he's in the first grade and his teachers gave him an assignment, the entire class an assignment, and said, you need to write on this little heart that we're gonna put on this big poster board for everybody in our class, something about yourself. So the teacher passes out these little hearts to the kids. And Romello gets his heart and he begins to start writing. And everyone starts writing and they're done. And Romello says, I need another heart. She says, no, you need to take the heart that you have and you need to utilize it and whatever you need to write. It can't be that many things. And he says, okay, I'll try to make it work. So he keeps writing. And he said, how do you spell this? And she goes, well, you just figured it out. So he just keeps writing. Doesn't tell him how to spell the words, but he has to figure it out. But he knows the words. And this is what's important. He knows it because it's, it's within him. It's lived in his life and it's declared over his life. So the teacher says, Romello, everybody's done. You're still not done. He goes, I'm almost finished, teacher. And then she got the heart and she looked at it and she took a picture and she sent it to me. And she said, I want to let you know you are a good mother. I gave this assignment to the children and everybody came up with one, maybe two things. But your child came up with the list of things of who he is. And I can tell you, I wasn't surprised, I wasn't shocked by it. It's because every morning on the way to school, to the bus stop, I say, Romello, give me your declarations. And he says very happily as he sits up in his car seat, I am strong, I am powerful, I am confident, I am loved, I am smart. And he lives in that so much that when he was asked who he was, he knew exactly who he was and he was declaring those words and that over his life. This is the year that we are declaring, I shall live. That's your three word prayer. I shall live, I shall declare. And when you teach your children three word prayers, they can go and have affirmation every single day in their life. It's important for us to understand that we need to have words that we can hold on to when the enemy comes, when those valleys begin to get low and we want to get back to the mountaintop. You don't have to remember a whole string of words. You don't have to be able to tie them all together into a sentence. All you need to know is three word prayers that you can live by of things that you had an expectation for God to do in your life. Father, my provider, prosperity is mine. I love God. I declare God. God is alive. Lord, you're good. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever it is that sits down in your soul, you might be going through so many things in your life and you might say, God, I don't know how I'm gonna come out of this situation, but God, my attorney, Lord, my provider, Jesus, my healer, Lord, my doctor. And when you begin to say these things, when you look at your list and say, keep me wise, build me up, make me strong, those things begin to sit inside of you. And when you declare them and when you declare them past, Passionately, with the name of Jesus, I tell you, mountains begin to come down, strongholds begin to break, and you begin to declare the word of Lord over your life. And when you get to know him so personally, when Jesus was on the cross, he just said, Abba, Father. And when you say, Abba, Father, what you're saying is, Daddy, I can call on my earthly father to do some things for me. And I call my father, my daddy. But I want to let you know, we serve a God that sits high and he looks down low. He is like our daddy. And I want you to know your three word prayers can sound like this. Daddy adores me. Daddy loves me. Daddy provides me. Daddy is everything. 
I love daddy. Be my strength. Be my hold. My strong tower. Lord, watch me. Whatever it is that you need to declare in your life, you can declare those things and you can put your three word prayers of declaration all over your house. You can put them on your phone. You can put them on your tablets, whatever it is that you need to know when you're sitting in the car, daddy, protect me. Daddy, my attorney, daddy, my doctor, you can declare these things over your life because we are living in a time where we need to have the power of Jesus at our very tip of our tongue. And we are gonna declare his word. We're gonna do it. We're gonna start today. You're gonna take this list. You're gonna write out your three word prayers of declaration and you're gonna start them over your life. You can have your children do it. You can have everyone in your home, make it a wonderful activity because this is the year I shall live. I shall live. My mom, when we were little kids, she would, when we got sick, as I close out with this, she would say to us, after she prayed with us, she would say, I believe God. That was our three word prayer growing up. Didn't know it until we got older, right? When that begins to sink into your soul, I believe God is a three word prayer. And now to this day, when my son hurts himself, when we need to fix things, I just say, raise your hands and say, I believe God. This is the year we are declaring, I believe God. I believe God. I shall live. I declare God. Daddy, my father. Daddy loves me. I love daddy. Whatever it is, this is the year for declaration. This is the year that you shall live and declare. Thank you for joining us in the conference on this weekend. We look forward to having you and we look forward to seeing what your declarations of expectations are. Go forth and live in expectation. God bless you and thank you. I shall live and not die. I declare to trust in my God. Yes, I'm going to go through some suffering go up and down some hills, but I will be, I declare to be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of my God. I will be consistent and no matter what I go through, I trust in Him to take me through. I will declare the victory, His victory, all the way, no matter what. He is my almighty God. I will declare this day victory. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hi ladies, welcome to our ladies conference. I'm just so excited and I will be your presenter for this topic on today titled Living Stronger Together Sisterhood. And my name is Sister Sherry Tobert. So come along with me as we grow in the Lord just a little bit more. I just wanna share some key points with you and I know that you'll be blessed. Will you please bow with me just for a moment of prayer. Lord, I just thank you so much. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for how you're going to use your servant, oh God. Lord, I decrease and I ask that you please increase in me, Lord, that your people will be blessed in the holy, righteous name of Jesus. Let these words of encouragement from your Bible, oh God, fall on good ground, oh God, and take root. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. And I just want to first take a moment also to thank Missionary McKnight and Missionary Lori and the whole conference team for all of your hard work and allowing me this opportunity to come before you today. Amen. Again, our topic on today is Living Strong Together Sisterhood. When we think about the word sisterhood, you may say, well, what is that? Well, let's look at um, the meaning of sisterhood. An association, 
society, or community of women linked by a common interest, religion, or trade. And you may say, well, that's really good for a visual, but let's bring it home a little bit more. And I know the Lord laid this on my heart this morning. When you see these group of crayons, and these group of crayons, they represent what sisterhood is. There's many colors, there's many shapes and sizes. Some of them are more pointed than others, but they're all in a group, just like what we just spoke about, linked. We're all joined together. And this rubber band around it, it holds us together. And that is God's grace, His love and how Jesus has looked beyond all of our faults and he's brought us together to be a beautiful bouquet of love. Now when you look at these crayons, you'll see that there's some in the middle. This is why sisterhood is so important because during our lives and when we're facing different situations, loss of a loved one, a child, our marriage may fail or break up, we may be going through separation, we may have illness in our body, all kind of things that happen during our lives, sometimes we just need a covering. And that is our sisterhood. Because as we come together praying and seeking the Lord, sometimes you're gonna need someone to carry you through. And that's what happens in the sisterhood. Sometimes when you're living in the middle, someone's carrying you in prayer. And when you get to church, sometimes they just wanna give you a big hug or give you an elbow or a fist pump, but that's their way of letting you know that I care for you because the love of God in my heart just laid on my heart to come and give you a hug or give you, send you a text or give you a phone call or mail you out a card like our missionary Anderson does so well. When you think about a crayon by itself, us by itself, it's kind of, it will be pretty easy to break this crayon. But when you place it back in the sisterhood, back in the group of crayons, it's gonna be quite difficult to take these and break them. And that's why it's so important to stay in the sisterhood. Now we're gonna look at some points what brings a hardship or what will disrupt a healthy sisterhood. So many times you'll hear the expression, a house divided against itself. But know this, it's more than just an expression or a phrase. This is actually from the word of God, which is found in St. Mark 3, 25, when Jesus spoke about a house divided, a kingdom divided. What that means is, it literally means that success comes from sticking together and to do anything else is to invoke disaster okay so we want to be in a place where we want to bring unity and that comes with being around the sisterhood because we learn from one another now we'll go into a little bit more on some of the points that disrupt a healthy sisterhood First, and this was one of the main ones when I began studying that God kind of planted me here. A woman's self-perception, the ideal that you have about the kind of person that you are. That second point, it says, not being able to celebrate your sister's accomplishments without saying the word, but believing what your true enemy says. So let's look at the self-perception a little bit closer. If you can, if you have a piece of paper and a pen or something to write with, can you please just like a rating scale, like one, not so well, but 10, I'm pretty strong in it. We're going to do some self-reflection to see how, what our status of our self-perception is, okay? One, and you can just mark it along, and this is for your eyes only, okay? But this will help. One, you believe in yourselves. You're confident in your abilities and where to improve. Two, you know what you want, your needs, and you're able to communicate it. You feel worthy of being loved. Three, you're an effective communication skills. You have effective communication skills, good listening skills. You're open to hear good advice. Four, Drive to succeed. You have that determination. You're okay with mistakes. 
willing to learn from your mistakes. We're talking about a healthy self-image, self-perception. Five, you're comfortable with change. And that's not so easy. But when you become stronger in the Lord, you'll become healthy in that area. Six, enjoy healthy relationships, able to accept constructive cr criticism without letting it impact your confidence. And sometimes that's what we call putting a dent in your confidence sometimes when you receive constructive cr criticism. Number seven, you're goal oriented. They have a sense of direction and purpose. That's what goal oriented is. Eight, you're able to laugh at yourself because laughter truly is the best medicine. Nine, taking care of yourself physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Taking care of yourself emotionally, you're able to clearly um, move away from negative emotions. Secondly, you read and you learn constantly new things. You keep an open mind. Spiritually, you stay in your word. You fast and you pray. And physically, you exercise. Exercising your body, exercising, getting out there and just walking or, or in place, jogging, riding a bike, taking care of yourselves. These are just nine things and I'm more than willing to type them up and I can email them out to you if you would like. So when you look over those nine items, how did you come out? Did you have more ones than tens? Did you fall somewhere between the middle, around five, six? Continue to look at it and say, you know what? I have some work to do. As us all, we have work to do because we are always becoming better and stronger women. Praise God. And now when we look at the second one, it says, not being able to celebrate your sister's accomplishments without saying the word, but. It's so important because as I was attending a training, they said that if we can take the word, but, when we are giving someone a compliment, or constructive criticism, sometimes it's e more easily received. You know, they're more receptive to hear what we have to say. For an example, if someone comes to me and they say, you know, Sister Sherry, you did a good job today, but if you just would have spoke a little better, if you just would have looked at the camera a little bit more directly, sometimes that could be hurtful, right? It's constructive, but how does this sound? Sister Sherry, I enjoyed you today and I am praying that God continue to do the work through you. So be encouraged. See how you take away the word but and just add the word and? How it shifts the, temp the temperament of that statement and it, it just flows a little better. And the person on the other end, they're able to receive it because truly we are helpers one to another. Three. Believing what your true enemy says. Don't get caught up in fighting one another. Remember the visual that I showed you with the group of crayons? If you want to be able to stay in that sisterhood and be in a healthy place, realize who the true enemy is, and it's Satan. He's the accuser of the brothers. He's the one that is the father of lies. And don't believe what he says, okay? These are just some of the things that will interrupt a healthy sisterhood. Now we're going to look at some things that promote a strong sisterhood. Looking at number one, and that magical word first is trust God's word. Know what he says is true. Next, when you embrace the beautiful woman God has made you to be, you will be able to walk in a confident relationship with your sisters. Three, deal with every demonic thought immediately. I drove up behind a lady or someone was in a car and on their back of their car on the bumper it says, not today, Satan. You got to call him just as he is and pull down that stronghold. When he's trying to feed you lies about your sister, immediately when it comes into your spirit, say, not today, Satan. 
That's my sister. I don't know what she went through to get here today. I don't know what she was facing at home, but praise God, she is here. She's not my enemy. She is my sister and we're gonna join forces together and I'm gonna encourage her like she encourages me. Don't let it take root. Be strong and let God be glorified in your relationship. Let's look at three points to remember. Each day, we're going to complete a daily introspection. And I like this word because it was a little bit more than self-perception. Introspection means to look inside. It is taking a moment to examine what you do, say, think, or feel, and how it affects your life and the lives of others. I thought that this was a very important point because when we take a moment to realize not only looking at who we are as a person, but how does my actions reflect and impact those around me? Do I leave them with a smile? Do I leave them maybe happy twice that they see me and they see me leave? <laughs> how does my life, is Jesus being glorified in what I do and what I say? introspection each day look in your heart and say Lord where do I need to change how do I change if you please help me okay and then our second point is repeat what God's Word says about you daily let's look at some of his word and what he says about us okay starting with Ephesians 2 and 10 for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Okay, that's a beautiful passage verse to remember each day. Our next one is Isaiah 41 and 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Another word that I truly love, amen, is Psalms 5, 11, and 12. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy because thou defendest them. We don't have to fight our own battle. God is our defender. He is our avenger. We don't want to fight and, and lose out on what God has for us. He has an expected end for us. Good, not evil. So let's wait on him and let him fight our battles, okay? Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. For thou, Lord, wilt bless the righteous. We are his righteous ones. Praise God, because we took on his righteousness. Our self-righteousness that's not gonna help us make it. But if we take on God's righteousness, we're gonna be all right. With favor wilt thou compass him as with a shield. Praise God. I don't know if you've ever seen a shield like the ones that we wear right now during the COVID, some of us. That shield is there to protect us for things from things that we don't even see coming at us germs and diseases. Well, God is there to protect us from things we don't even see coming at us. But trust me when I tell you, and you know as a witness, and if I can get someone to say amen, <laughs> God is guarding you and it's going to be all right. Know this as I get ready to wrap up. Within you, God created someone so unique that even if you wear the same dress, teach the same lesson, cook the same meal, it will come out unified. Now, I don't even know if that's a word in the dictionary. I looked, couldn't find it, but I'm telling you, that word came to me and I was like, we are so original. We are so special. We are so unique that we are who we are because God created us to be. So we don't have to be jealous or envious or try to compete. Just be who you are. It's an original ready let's go you might say well how do i get started of building a strong sisterhood you know how you must first pray ask god to give you wisdom to lead you 
to show you who he would have you to approach first or who he would have to approach you to prepare your heart so that you're ready to receive what they are going to speak to you. Secondly, you want to be able to accept Accept the invitation. If they come to you, don't allow the enemy to say, well, why? Why are they coming to me? What are they needing from me? What am I going to have to do? Just open your heart and say, Lord, I accept this invitation. Yes, my sister, I would love to be a part of that. I would love to join you. Lastly, move. After you accept it, don't go back and ponder. Don't allow the spirit of procrastination to you know, come in, you're going to have to get up and start going. Go to your closet, get your outfit ready so that you are ready for that event that you just got invited to. Even if it's just a lunch date or just going out having some yogurt or taking a walk, get involved because like those crayons, we have to stick together, okay? I just wanted to say thank you and realize and remember the power of sisterhood. That's who we are. Be encouraged, women of God. Amen, and God bless you. Well, ladies, this conference is off to a great start. Didn't we enjoy our speakers? Listen, this is only day one. I told you that you would be blessed. Now it is time for the Word of God. Our guest speaker is Pastor Latanya Blake Allen. She is graced to serve in various areas of ministry, licensed as a Church of God in Christ evangelist in 1991. Pastor Allen also serves, currently serves, as a senior administrative assistant to Supervisor Barbara Bryant in the Southern California First Jurisdiction Women's Department. As well, she serves as the Emmanuel Regional Missionary and the Church of God in Christ International Department of Women Prayer Line Coordinator. Pastor Allen is a celebrated author of three published books. After the 2005 death of her husband, Pastor Ron Allen, First Lady Latanya Allen stepped into her new role of being a widow, single mother, and the leader of the church she and her husband founded in 1994. The Power of Praise Faith Ministries, Church of God in Christ in Lancaster, California. Pastor Latanya Blake Allen has become well known for ministering with power and authority. Her unique level of transparency and authenticity has become the hallmark of her ministry. The loves of Pastor Allen's life are her two anointed children, Crystal and Blake. The absolute apple of her eye is her beautiful granddaughter, daughter, Bailey. Now, let's sit in prayer as we hear from God through Pastor Allen. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today is a great day to live a greater life, and I'm living in my greater and in my future right now. Please allow me to give high honor and esteem to your great pastor, Superintendent Benny L. Tolliver, and your beautiful First Lady Missionary Jean Tolliver. I honor the Women's Department President, Missionary Kendria McKnight, Thank you for the opportunity to minister. Special God bless you to my wonderful friend, Dr. Kathy James, for coordinating such an exciting and life-changing women's conference. What an amazing theme we have. I shall live and declare. I promise the words that I will minister during this conference will significantly point to the theme on one level or another. Shall we go into the word? My text will be coming from St. Mark chapter 5, verse 25 through 34. It reads like this. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and 
had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her, that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. The title that I want to put with this message is two words only, cold blue. Now these two words may not necessarily mean anything to the average person. However, if you happen to be in a hospital and hear those words, the entire atmosphere changes. Nurses and doctors go on high alert and their pace begins to quicken because somebody has an emergency. A cold blue signifies that somebody's life is hanging in the balance and what the doctors and what the nurses do within the next few minutes will make the difference between life and death. Cold blue is an emergency. Emergency is, it means something has to be done quickly. Uh, what When you have an emergency, this is not the time to procrastinate. Uh, procrastinate, to put off, to let go, to postpone, to drag your feet, to be negligent. At some point in everyone's life, there will be cold blue situations. I'm delivering this message right now because someone is dealing with a cold blue emergency situation. I'm delivering this message right now because even though you are in a cold blue situation, it's not really important how you got there. The bigger issue is that you need help and you need help right now. Some of you that are viewing this message right now, you are dealing with circumstances that are weighing heavy and pressing hard on you. And I'm not talking about just difficult, uncomfortable or inconvenient situations. I'm talking about an emergency. See, there's something about an emergency that creates urgency. You don't have time to explain all of the ramifications of the situation to folks that have the inclination to speculate and hypothesize how you ended up in such a situation. Listen, what's important at this moment is can you help me? Because I am literally bleeding to death right in front of you. Please understand that there are all kinds of emergencies. However, oftentimes we confuse emergencies with inconveniences. I can take the time to explain the differences between an emergency and an inconvenience, but 
in the brevity of time, let me say that in most cases, an inconvenience is not a matter of life and death. So please note, if you will, that the woman in our text had more than an inconvenience. She had an emergency. She had a real crisis. She was broken. This woman had a cold blue situation. She had exhausted everything that she had at her disposal. She had depleted her resources and all of her money was gone. Her strength was gone. Her family and her friends were gone. Her hopes, her visions, goals were broken. The text reveals to us that after spending everything that she had, she still was not cured. As a matter of fact, she was worse than ever. But then she heard about Jesus. Glory to God. The Bible teaches us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I believe the more she heard about Jesus and how he went everywhere healing those who were afflicted, it fortified her faith and she was able to go after Jesus. The next thing we see is this broken, emaciated, weak woman going to where Jesus was. She pursued him despite her condition by going after her healing. There comes, my sisters, a time when it is necessary for you to go after that which you need. What is problematic with some people is they are always expecting God to drop everything and come to their rescue. James chapter four, verse eight tells us, when you draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh to you. This woman put herself in the press. She pressed her way to Jesus. Listen to this. It is possible to get a blessing just by being in the right place at the right time. But when you need a miracle and you need a breakthrough, you cannot afford to leave things up to chance. You must participate in your own deliverance. Please understand this if you will. To do so, uh, it's going to cost you something. This woman was in a desperate condition. She had an issue that was killing her. Her issue was a blood problem. She hemorrhaged for 12 years. The book of Leviticus tells us that the life of the flesh is in the blood. This woman's blood issue was draining her of her life. Now, according to the text, this woman's issue was a blood disorder, but your issue may be something totally different. It could be rejection, low self-esteem, bitterness, anger, resentment, unforgiveness, hurt. Could be a financial or relational issue. The remarkable thing that makes the woman in our text different from a lot of people is that she refused to play games by acting as if nothing was wrong with her. She was proactive about her situation. This woman knew she had an issue and she knew that that issue was killing her. She knew that she was broken and all she wanted was to be free. All she wanted was to be well. She didn't have time to be cute or proper, intellectual or logical. She didn't have time to go and get her weave tightened up or her nails done or a pedicure first. She knew that her situation was a matter of life and death for her. It was 
a cold blue. This woman said, everything else is immaterial and absolutely irrelevant. My appearance, my gender, my nationality, my religious affiliation, my financial status, or the lack thereof has no significance. If I could just touch his clothes, I know I'll be healed. I know I'll be delivered. I can't imagine her saying within herself that even though I feel bad, I look bad, I still have to press my way out and get to Jesus because I heard that he has something that I need. Even though this issue is literally killing me, I can either sit here and die or I can take my chances and press my way to Jesus. Even though there are some people around me that don't think I qualify for the miracle, I cannot let them block or stop me because what you think of me is really none of my business. That's actually what I would say. But even though there are some people that want to judge me according to my affliction, I can hear this woman saying, I am determined like never before to get out of this situation. I may be in a broken situation, but I am not forgotten. I may be in a broken situation, but I am not forsaken. I may be in a broken situation, but I'm not unfixable. This woman knew she was risking her life by coming in contact with the people. She was ceremonially unclean. And to be in the public meant that you put other people at risk of becoming unclean too. The Bible says in Leviticus 15 and 19, and if a woman have an issue and her issue in her flesh be blood, she shall be put apart seven days and whosoever toucheth her shall be unclean until the even. But she made up in her mind that whatever the risks are, she was willing to face them. She needed deliverance. And this is a cold blue situation. I got to get to Jesus. Her issue affected her appearance. She was pale and frail. She was weak suffering from anemia. She was broke. She was in a full-blown cold blue situation. May I submit to you that just like this woman in the text, there are so many that are broken, hurting, ashamed, struggling, unhappy, confused, want to be healed, want peace of mind, want to be set free. They're in a cold blue situation. You may have visited doctors or counselors or therapists, gone to rehab. You've used all your resources and still you are not cured. You're not whole. You're not free. Well, here lies the problem. You haven't touched the right person. Allow me to direct you to the right person. The saints of old said it like this. He is the lily of the valley. And he is the bright and morning star. He is a strong tower. He is a way maker. He is a heart fixer and a mind regulator. He is joy in the midst of sorrow. He is peace in the middle of the storm. He is water in a thirsty land. He is food on my table, clothes on my back. He opens blinded eyes and he unstops deaf ears. He, he can make the lame walk and the dumb uh, to talk. Ah, You don't have to uh, set up an appointment with him. He's a very present help 
in the time of trouble. Romans 10, 13 says it like this. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This woman in our text, she didn't have a physical appointment with Jesus. But I do, do believe that she had a divine appointment with Jesus, the healer, Jesus, the miracle worker, Jesus, the savior and the deliverer. The Bible says that when she touched Jesus, immediately she was made whole. At that very moment, she was made whole. At that very point, she was made whole. I'm here to tell you your healing and your deliverance is just a touch away. One touch will set you free. One touch will change your life. One touch will free your troubled mind. One touch will change your finances. One touch will deliver you from every manner of sickness and disease. You don't have to die. You don't have to succumb to what the enemy throws your way. One touch will dry your tears. It will renew your strength. It will lift the heavy burden. When you are in the middle of your cold blue situation, that's the time to open up your mouth and declare that you will not die, but you shall live. This woman in her isolated surroundings, she had to make that declaration. I'm going to live. This is not going to get the best of me. This is not the end of me. I know what the law says. I know what people think of me. I know what it looks like. But I will not die. I shall live. I'm going to go after that which I need. And so I submit to you, the beautiful women of this beautiful progressive Church of God in Christ Women's Conference, that whatever situation you find yourself in, just know that your life is only a word or a death declaration away. In the text, the, the scripture says that the woman said, if I could just touch his clothes, I know I'll be made whole. She made a declaration. She declared her healing and her deliverance. And I want to submit to you that there is nothing too hard for God. There is nothing that he cannot do except for fail. And whatever you're dealing with and whatever your situation is, just decree and declare so that it can be established that you have the victory. Let's pray. Father, we just give you glory. We thank you for this declarative word this word of freedom, this word of victory, this word that is able to deliver us even in a cold blue situation. For God, you are the God that heals, Jehovah Rapha. You're the God that provides, Jehovah Jireh. You are the God of peace, our Jehovah Shalom, you are from everlasting to everlasting. There is nothing that is too hard for you. So, Father, I lift these beautiful women in your presence. You see their situations. You know what they're dealing with. You know, God, what they have been experiencing. And so I pray, God, that your hand of mercy reaches out and touches them because this night they have declared that they shall live. And so we speak life. Ah, hey, glory to God, to every situation 
that the enemy has pronounced death to. We speak life in the name of Jesus. And for this, God, we give you the glory and the honor and the praise. And it is all in your son Jesus' name. And we say thank God. Amen and amen. I don't know about you, but I feel like living. I am decreeing and I am declaring that I am the righteousness of God. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above only and not beneath. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Greater is he that's within me than he that's in the world. Come on, what are you declaring? I hope it's life. I love you with the love of the Lord. Thank you for this opportunity just to drop a word of encouragement in your life. Have an amazing night and we'll see you tomorrow. God bless.